Hey everyone, it's Saturday the 13th of January and the time is roughly 8 o'clock in the evening. I say roughly because the clock up there has actually finally stopped, the battery has finally died in it. It's been so long I can't remember the last time I put a new battery in it. That's how uh, well that clock has done. Good couple of years at the very least, if not longer. Um, so yeah, I'm just going by my central heating clock which is roughly an hour and ten minutes fast which would make that about eight o'clock in the evening anyway oh there's my full cat that i bought through uh, a bit of a mix in this video um, i've been playing around with one of my computer systems um, it's an old rm all-in-one so we'll have a look at this and explain uh what uh, sort of triggered my adventure with this I do need to um, get a bit for it at some point. Um, anyway, there's an update on those American barricade lamps, and I've got another one over there to show you that was uh, very kindly given to me. Um, one Airfix double O, well, actually, it's HO scale um, locomotive. And I believe HO is just a smidge smaller than double O gauge but the track is the same width. So yeah we'll have a look at that in a minute as well um, and just a few general things I want to have a talk about um, while I've got the camera on. Um, and I'm going to start with good old HMRC. You know, the tax people. <laughs> um, it's kind of a rant but I I understand what they're trying to do. So, from the 1st of January, websites like eBay, Etsy, uh, what was the other one? I can't think of it. There's another one. Amazon. You know, if you've got an Amazon shop or anything like that. Sites like that, if you make more According to what I read, it's more than £2,000 or sell more than 30 items a year. These websites have to report it to uh, HMRC. And then they will decide if it's taxable and obviously how much tax you've got to pay on it. My problem with that is with someone like me who just wants to, who has a lot of collections and thus I get an overflow of stuff like the die cast that means I'm going to struggle to get rid of it now because I've certainly got way more than 30 lots out there um, and you know I'm not doing it as a shop I'm not doing it as a business I'm selling personal items you know to clear out my personal stuff so I don't think it's fair that I could run the risk of being taxed on something when I'm not a business. If I was running a shop, fair enough. If I was running doing it as a business, fair enough, I'd be more than willing to pay the taxes. But it just means I've now got to be very careful, doesn't it? Um, I don't know how they're going to work it. I mean, to be honest, I don't think I could sell 30 items that would equate to... Uh, £2,000 worth of goods anyway. Uh, the only other option I've got is just to go on to Facebook groups and try and sell some of the die cast there. But in fairness, I've tried that on a couple and I've had no luck. So... I don't know, what do you guys think? Good idea, bad idea? Is it going to cause extra problems? I mean, if you think about it, a lot of these uh, eBay shops and whatnot and Amazon stores are going to have to put their prices up to compensate for the tax that they're going to get charged. Which is understandable. But to me, they're businesses. They should be registered as such and should be paying taxes anyway. In my opinion, you know. That's just my two cents on it anyway uh, the other thing before we get into having a look at stuff uh, my moped is actually running again it started running all by itself 
Although I did find out what the issue was, it um, overflowed the carb or petrol again. The carb just overflowed and ran into the uh, air intake. I only discovered that because I think it was either Monday or Tuesday. Um, I took the carburetor off to put the size 84 main jet back in, thinking that would cure a problem. It hasn't. It hasn't made any difference. So I'm not really sure what this problem is. Um, and that's when I found that the inside, the opening part for the air filler box was all wet with fuel. <laughs> Pardon me, and that's when I sort of realised why it cut out on me. This, that moped has done that to me once before. I have no idea what causes it. I mean, I put the jet in, it fired up fine. It fired up fine before I put the jet in. Um, and it rode home fine, apart from that problem when I get above 40 miles per hour. It only does it when I get to that speed or above. And it's, the best way I can describe it is, it just acts like the spark is just intermittently dropping out, but on a regular basis. You know, it, sort of, it just makes you do this on the pad, you know, the sort of, where it's kicking in and out and you've got power, no power, power, no power, power, no power. <laughs> That's all it does. It, you, you cannot ride it at that speed. But as soon as I drop the revs and drop down to below 40, ride smooth as anything. No coughing, no splattering. No farting, no nothing. It just rides smooth. It's only when I get to that 40 mile an hour. Um, so I can rule out the jet because that didn't make any difference whatsoever. Because <laughs> it was doing this with the other jet. I thought when I put the size 80 jet in, because I downsized from 84 thinking that was causing some problems in the early days. When um, you know, I'd just rebuilt the engine. I thought that maybe at that speed it wasn't getting enough fuel. And it was fuel starvation, but apparently not. Um, could it be spark? Is it that the ignition system being designed for a 50cc is just not being able to keep up with this? Don't know, I'm, I'm not an expert. Um, I'm going to look at it. I mean, it's rideable as is. I could do 35 tops, which, in fairness, for what I use it for, which is to go from here to my mum's. And I usually use the back road, which I can't really do much more than that on it safely anyway. I mean, I could. And I might have a couple of times. Um, there is a couple of, like, straight stretches of road where I could hit 40 on quite nicely. Um, one of them is through a woods, and I don't like doing it through the woods anymore anyway, because I have almost hit more squirrels than I care to count. I swear they are out to kill me on that road. <laughs> Nothing big like deers or anything like that. No, just dingy little squirrels that can't make up their mind which side of the frickin' road they want to go to. Because they literally they do that in front of you, so you don't know where to go either. <laughs> and then they stop right in front of you and stare at you. <laughs> Stupid things. I love squirrels to bits. They are my favourite animal in the world and they are really stupid at times. It's a bit disheartening because most of the ones I see that have been hit by cars are the younger ones. So yeah, I really... I stopped actually going through that wood so far so it gave me a bit more time to react to the silly little critters. Yeah, anyway, um, but yeah, it's usable now. I've still got to put the other one through for an MOT. I'm going to wait until my next payday for that one. Um, but I, I literally have not ridden that for over a month. I last rode it about a week before Christmas, actually, from the front when I bought it around back. I was in thick fog as well. That reminds me, I need a new headlight bulb for my jog. One of the uh, contacts has actually broken off the bottom of the bulb. Well, I say broken off, it's still attached, but it's not glued down. Which means the connection on it is a lot more intermittent than it was. Oh, I must remember to get some... 
what they call it, that special electrical grease you can get because that lamp hole was being a pain in the ass. Obviously I'll just park it outside so it's outside in all weathers. Um, and I find that for some reason it's only the low beam contact that does it. It gets dirtied up and then stops working. And I have to, nearly every time I go out to use it, especially if it's been sat for a week, I have to clean that contact. And that's when I noticed that it had sort of come unstuck from the bottom of the bulb, but it's still connected. So if I give it just the right spot and put the bulb in, it does work. Well then after a while I'll go over a big pothole or something and it'll stop working. So yeah, I want some of that uh, electrical grease. I might try just a bit of that on there. It might uh, prevent it from corroding up again. <coughs> right. Uh, good news, mum and stepdad are both over COVID, um, rather, not Q, I don't know where COVID came from. I wasn't even thinking anything that started with Q. <laughs> anyway, yeah, they're over there, COVID. I've been over it for about a week now. Uh, I thought I might have got it because I was sneezing and coughing and all sorts the other day, but it came back negative. I had a feeling though it was just my um, sinuses because we've suddenly our temperatures just dropped here. I mean, according to my computer, it's three degrees tonight. We've had a few frosts, and every time I've noticed, every time the weather has a sudden change like that, my sinuses play up. And I've actually been taking some antihistamines, and I'm feeling a heck of a lot better now. So. That's good. Right. Let's look at these uh, barricade lamps, shall we? So, here's one. One of the reasons I want to get this video done as well, because I need to, well, I need the worktop free to uh, do part two of my favourite double O gauge uh, model locos. I need to do the diesel ones next. Right. So, let's just move you. <coughs> I've still got a bit of a tickly cough, though. Right, so last year I bought these on eBay, 25 quid each, two separate auctions from the same seller. Um, I was the only bidder, so I guess I was the only idiot that decided to put a bid on them. <laughs> I'm surprised no one else did though, I don't know what put anyone else off, unless, unless I'm just one of the very few British collectors that are into the American stuff, I don't know. Anyway, here we are, we've got them. Only one um, I managed to get to work. I had an issue with this one. So if I turn the uh, screw in to switch this one on, we should get life out of it. There we go. Flashy, flashy. Should have two light bulbs in there, which I think I meant to flash alternately, but only one works on this one. Even with a good bulb in it. Although I did notice when I had a good bulb in there, it glowed so dim I almost missed that it was actually glowing. <laughs> um, but I'm not too worried about that. It does work. It does something that is good enough for me. And these are heavy. <laughs> Especially with two batteries in. Right. This one, I was having a weird problem. Is it had a short when I put it together like this. And it took me a while to figure out why. In fact, I weren't even trying to fix it when I figured out what the issue was. So I can show you if I just pull that down properly. And it is working. It's quite dim because the batteries are cruddy in this one. I think that's why it's not flashing anymore because I was flashing. But anyway, it does work. So, the problem... I do with the torch, but I haven't got... I haven't got one in here at the minute. Well, I have, but it's got no batteries in it. Unless... I've got some in a box over here. I've got a couple of boxes of random batteries. Have I got anything in there I can chuck in here just temporarily? There's three. Yeah. You see, the short was only present when this was all assembled with this battery contact plate 
fixed to the light fin. If I took this plate off and then set that on the battery separate from this, it worked. And sometimes it would work when this was together and then it would stop working. And I was like, what on earth is going on? Now, I did figure it out, like I said, accidentally, because I just want to put it together so I could put it away in the cupboard and, you know, come back to it on a rainy day. <clears throat> but uh, while I was doing that, I actually spotted what the problem was. Well, what I thought the problem was, and it turned out it was absolutely correct. So, under here, I don't know how good this flashlight is going to be. you got the potted electronics here, one either side. Um, they're just interconnected with some wires and they're bolted on with a bolt that goes all the way through and a nut on the other side. Now, if you look at this side, that bolt is actually longer than this one. And that bolt was in this side. If you also look, I think it's just because of the way the electronics are pod, there's a big gap on this side between the bolt and the uh, battery contact plate than there is this side. And I noticed when this longer bolt was this side, it was so close to this little positive contact there that um, I could barely see a gap. And I got to thinking, I thought, I wonder, I wonder if just the weight of this alone sitting on the batteries, because I did try it that way as well when I had the short. <coughs> if that was literally just enough weight, because this is quite heavy, and it was flexing that enough and just shorting it against that bolt. And, you know, maybe it was the same with this, because you have to push down quite hard when you've got it on the body. Like that. So I swapped the bolts around, and as you can see, it now works. So I'm guessing it was the problem. If I hadn't spotted that when I was just putting this together to put it into storage, um, it still wouldn't be working. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to find a couple of good batteries for that. I think I might have to invest in some more new ones. So, this one was given to me by a friend of a friend. It was a friend of Kat's. Um, He's also a friend of mine, he's on my Facebook as well. <clears throat> um, but he's had a clean out in his garage and he found this up and said I could have it. So this is a JSP Maxi Light. Um, still made today. They're LED now, but they do still make them. Um, and JSP, for those that may not know, stands for John Stone Safety Products. So they JSP does a lot of various products. <laughs> Traffic cones, barriers, lamps, um, face masks with the fills, all sorts of different face masks and other PPE. They do all sorts. It's quite a large company. Uh, but yeah, this one works as well. I'm just trying to find something I can switch it on with. I've lost my screwdriver. Ah. Lost one and I found two identical at the same time. Just push it up a little bit. There we go. Bit of a slow flash this one, but that could be because that battery is not a fully charged one as well. I've noticed some lights will flash slower as the battery discharges, and some, as it dims out, it actually flashes faster. I suppose it just depends on the circuit design. Yeah, it works. So this was. A lot dirtier than this as well. This is actually cleaned up really, really well. And it's got some sort of markings of some sort on it. Um, <laughs> and Kat did ask me, um, did I actually have any of these in the collection? Yes, I've got a shelf full in the cupboard outside the front door. But I actually do like these, so I don't mind adding extras to the collection. It's not something I would go out and buy because you can find these on eBay. Um, even second hand, there's a lot of sellers that want like 10 to 15 quid for them. But because I've got so many, I'm not willing to spend that much on them. 
or don't need to. Uh, but when I'm given one for free, I'll take it. <laughs> right. And then my nose has started to drip again. Could be because it's a cold night. So, uh, I don't think it was the previous video. I think it was the video before that. Um, no, it was the previous video, sorry. No, it wasn't. I do apologise. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one before that when I got those uh, four more locomotives from the diecast guy and I said I was going to give one to my stepdad, the mallard. Well, I guess we kind of traded because he gave me that one. Uh, <laughs> nothing really that I could use on my layout because it's not an American based layout, but I do like it. And I think I will just run it just for a bit of fun. Little American loco in HO scale. The Union Pacific number 119. 440 locomotive with tem um, tender. As you can see, HO scale is a wee bit smaller than uh, our 00 gauge scale. <clears throat> I think HO is one. I'm just trying to I think it's 171 scale whereas H um, OO gauge is 176 scale <clears throat> uh, yeah. so a friend of mine popped over a couple of days ago wanting some bits and pieces for a computer of his <clears throat> um, and Prior to that, we'd spoken on Facebook because he sent me some pictures of some stuff he wanted to get rid of and I was interested in a soundbar and subwoofer with remote control and Bluetooth and whatnot. He wanted 100 quid for it. Uh, and then a couple of days later, as I said, he came over with this computer and a few bits for that. So we come up with a deal that uh, I'll sort out whatever bits I could and then we'll just come to an agreement on a deduction from the 100 quid. So that's what we did. <clears throat> I think we um, agreed on a 40 quid deduction because I did get quite a few bits for him. Couldn't do the Wi-Fi card actually because the only one I had didn't work. <coughs> Excuse me, so that way in the bin. Um, but we swapped motherboards. Um, I don't think we really needed to but he wanted something he could upgrade the RAM on because the computer he got had an Asus Micro ATX in it with only two RAM slots and I had an Asus motherboard up here with four and a much better spec actually because his one was uh, an Intel Pentium which I actually quite like I do like the Pentiums um, and the one I had was an AMD and the other odd thing was that the I.O. on the motherboard was exactly the same. It didn't change. We didn't even have to swap um, I.O. shields. We swapped motherboards. I gave him a GPU. There was an SSD as well. Um, <clears throat> uh, Osar cable, which isn't worth nothing really, is it? I've got a lot of books full of the damn things. So... I decided to put that motherboard in this RM all-in-one. Um, although it does seem to have a power problem. But I don't know if it's on the motherboard or what it is. It tends to power cycle sometimes. I end up having to unplug the mains cable, leave it for a bit, plug it back in, then it powers up fine. But it's done that on two different power supplies now. But I'm glad I swapped this one in because the other one only had a 20 pin. This one, which is absolutely identical in every way, not only had one SAR connector on it for that, it also had the 24 pin. And uh, there is no real reason that I did this build. I'm not finished with it yet either. I just wanted to know if I could like, put that in there 
um, and just try and get it up to some sort of modern spec so it can be used today. And I have succeeded. I mean, dinky little screen, so wouldn't be brilliant. <laughs> Well, it could be that I'm just used to the bigger screens. Um, but the only change I want to make at the moment is to change this one terabyte hard drive to an SSD. It doesn't have to be one terabyte because I doubt I'm going to need it. Not on this. Um, but that's all I had at the time that actually had uh, Windows 10 pre installed. So it's just a case of putting that in there. I had to use. Um, three and a half to five and a half inch drive adapter or bay adapter I should say because um, obviously that's a laptop hard drive and it's designed for desktop drives um, but I did have a couple spare so I threw that in there it's got eight gigabytes of RAM on a Kingston stick there don't know what the max is for this motherboard I've not looked it up um, but it did have um, eight gigs across two four gigabyte sticks um, my friend kept them because I didn't have anything to upgrade it to anyway <clears throat> um, I don't think this would have been compatible either because his machine or his RAM sticks were of a type that I've never actually seen before it was it 10280 I think was their megahertz rating and I've got like, you know, 16, 660 and whatnot, and 133, etc. I didn't have anything to match, and I've got a feeling that's what that is. Although, it will not work with this other 2 gigabyte Kingston, because I was going to try and get it up to like 10 gigs, but it didn't work. Unfortunately, uh, actually, where's my magnifying glass? What was the... The hertz of this one. Thirteen three thirty. Have I got something different here that I could actually try it? Oh, this one's Kingston as well. This is ten six hundred. Sticks like that. Let's try this one just out of curiosity. Is that one or two gig? Just so I know what I'm putting in here. Can't bloody find it. Two gig. We'll try that. See if it's going to do anything. Might not do anything, it might power cycle, who knows? Maybe it is working. It does take a little bit to boot up because of that hard drive. Mm. It is working, it wouldn't even do this with the uh, 13. 33s in there, the 13 three thirties in there, so maybe it just wasn't compatible, maybe I didn't think to change it. It's a one gigabyte of 10600. I have actually got more DDR3s and other machines. I've actually moved them all to the kitchen cupboard down there, out of the way. And clean out in that cupboard because otherwise it's just I know a kitchen cupboard is a weird place to put stuff like that but I've got so many kitchen um, cupboards in here that I don't need <laughs> being a single man I don't need this much cupboard space so it would just be sitting as an empty cupboard otherwise that's why I just decided to use it <clears throat> getting anywhere yet. Are we getting anywhere yet? <laughs> I'm still full of uh, dishes to do here. 
I forgot to put those in it. And let those soak. Right, um... Before I actually put that motherboard in there, I had this one in it. Which I put in a while ago just to modernise it a bit. But weird, look at that. It's got laptop dims in it. I think they're just 2 gigs. Yeah, 2 gigs. 6400s. Get rid of that bit of tape. Sort of from the era when um, you know they're still crossing over from Saab and IDE. You could still get boards with uh, both on it. Not quite sure what that header is there. It's a two pin header. I thought it was a fan header, but it's a lot smaller. Although this motherboard does actually have two fan headers. I haven't actually checked this one. I'm hoping it's got at least. Is this doing anything? Oh, I've got that. Yeah, I saw this thing. It's just taking a sweet time. I'm just going to check that I have got a fan header on here. It's got to have at least one, surely. I need a light. No, oh, there we go. It's taking a sweet time. That's the CPU one. Ah, yep. Yeah, I found one. We've got one right by the uh, BIOS spectrum. Got any more got four side connectors on it though. Even got a USB 3 socket if I want to get really fancy with this. I mean, I don't have the CD ROM drive connected because I thought that was causing the power cycle problem. Because um, I disconnected everything else and it was still doing it. But then all of a sudden it stopped. Um, but I thought, you know, with a modern board like this one, which will support all USB booting and whatnot, I thought, you know, I'll just use a USB drive so I could potentially get a drive thing for USB 3s to put on there in its place. Although it would be difficult to uh, get to that, though. Come on. Come can't use the scroll wheel on this mouse, it doesn't work for some reason. It sort of works intermittently. I will say that for the hard drive, it is damn quiet, it's just damn slow. <laughs> I haven't got the uh, hard drive light um, LED wired around the right way. That's why it's not flashing, it should be flashing here. Should be flashing red. I put the wire around the wrong way and I just haven't bothered to change it around yet. System. All of this because I just want to know if uh, 10 gigs are being registered or not. Yep. So we figured out what that RAM stick is, because the one that's in there doesn't tell me what the uh, megahertz is of it. But now we know it's a 10660, because it's working fine with this one. And it wouldn't work fine with the uh, 13330. Z. Well, I've got a 4 gigabyte one here. Could I go up even more? Nope, that's nah, a different rated one. Don't care. Not using it online at the minute anyway. cursor for a second there. Let's get this shut down. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's 
So things I would like to get for this, perhaps a little USB Wi-Fi adapter, and I actually haven't got any, I don't think. Um, I would also like to get an SSD, because that is just painfully slow. Seriously, painfully slow. Um, I would like to upgrade the power supply on this, but I don't think that I could find one that's going to fit this setup. And they are dinky little power supplies. I don't know what the rating of it is, but I would guess it's probably not much more than sort of two, maybe three hundred watts. And then again, for a system like this, you don't need a lot of power, do you? So I think. Upgrading this with a GPU would be out of the question for two reasons. You know. One, like a power. Just, uh, that's better. <laughs> yeah, lack of power. Um, and of course, these are half height bays anyway, they're not the full height, so I'm limited on what I could put on the PCI slots as well. And even though this has got four, this has only got three on the case, so I'm limited there as well. I'm actually glad I've got that amount of RAM in there. I mean, that would actually... If I put an SSD in this... Um, I've got it up and running on like Windows 10. I'll most likely run Windows 11 as and when I'll be forced to bloody upgrade to it. I won't for as long as I don't have to. But anyway, <clears throat> um, it would make at least a, a decent office PC, maybe, or a business PC. I mean, storage-wise, unless I want to go all out and put in a terabyte SSD or something like that, it wouldn't be great. Um, I'm not going to go that hard, I'm probably going to get something like either 120 gig or 256, something like that. Probably 120 gig because we can get them quite cheap. And at the end of the day, I just want to get this uh, working. <clears throat> All solid caps. That doesn't mean they're not electrolytic. search on uh, eBay but to get this disk drive out here there is also a three and a half uh, two and a half inch bay here so I actually suppose with a little bit of modding I mean we have got an extra power supply there which I would have to extend in order to do this now if I could get like another one of these bay adapters or something to go in here, I could potentially put a storage drive in here. But to do it, it does mean I'd have to take all this motherboard out, all of this, I'd have to undo the whole lot and take this whole panel out. Otherwise I can't see any way to actually get to the uh, disk drive here or anything else. I mean, there's a blank cover on here. Let's turn it around the way so I don't get tied up in the cables. So that's what's on the side. You've got your CD, DVD, drum, drum, DVD, ROM drive here, rather. And just a blank there. So maybe I could actually take advantage of that and upgrade it a bit more. It just depends on how you get to it. Because I can see... There's three screws down this side, none at the top, and I think there's another one. One, you can only see two down the other side. Now, might, actually, I might do that because then I could uh, do a bit of cable management. I mean, um, like I said, it doesn't matter about the CD-ROM drive. I've got external ones I can use. A motherboard this new should bloody support with it. Well, it's actually got a UEFI. Uh, BIOS, so I know that will support USB boot, so that wouldn't be a problem. I 
don't think many people actually use CD drives nowadays anyway. So we could do with a different one. I wouldn't mind upgrading that to something else. I mean, I know that's a Molex, but putting a SATA on there wouldn't be a problem because I've got one of these. Got a few of these actually, and if I could like feed that somehow through the back, then that shouldn't be an issue. I was just thinking if I do get um, an SSD, then it would be great if I could put storage drive on it as well, just because. Well, not be a laptop drive, but who cares? <laughs> oh, I hate Molex because they're such a pig to plug together. And a number of times I've plugged them together, you know, like two bits like that, and it pushes the bloody pins out. <clears throat> such a crap design. I'm so glad that they actually designed these, these SATA connectors. You know, they actually put more connectors on the power supplies nowadays. Then again, I suppose they'd lack them on this one because they didn't need them. I have actually got another Molex connector underneath all of this anyway, where it was connected to this. I want to take this off now. I'm going to undo these screws and just see if I can pop it this way. I can actually see screws there and there, and I don't know what they're for. Do these screws actually take this off, or does it just take the end panel out for better access? So what that does is find out. Oh, got four, sc uh, two screws in here as well. That one's loose. What are they for? Disk drive tray, maybe? So, I've got that off. Ah! Okay. Molex up this end already, so if I wanted to put a drive in here, so where's my torch? I'm still in here. Yep. Always forget to check whether I'm still in shot. Ah, ah. So you don't have to take that panel off. You do have to take out. Is the tray that it's connected? I wish I'd known this before because I cut the black Molex wires. So I'm thinking, in theory, that should. We've got a screw there. You can also take the other bay out as well, there's two screws on the end here. So upgrading the way that I want to shouldn't be an issue. Is there another screw underneath this bloody sticker somewhere? I think there is. Don't know what the sticker is, we'll just get these wires out of the way. I don't like that because that's a bit flimsy. No. 
Yep, yeah, there's one. We hit it. It's got a Windows 7 COA on the back of it, so that must have been what that shit was. There we go. So this was um see that just loops round okay so I think what I'll have to do is drop the power supply out and reconnect <laughs> I'll have to redo all the heat shrink I'm not going to do that tonight though Is brilliant actually. And I've got two of these. That means I haven't got to faff about threading that one through. I've got everything down here that I need. In fact, to save and the usage of uh, drive bay adapters. I'm going to put a hard drive back in there and that'll be the storage drive. I'll put the SSD in here. Once I've fitted the uh, bay adapter in here, I could do it the other way, but can't get a hard drive in here, I don't think. If I could, then I'll just leave it as is. If I can't, I'll swap. No, I couldn't because the holes don't line up. Well, it's a bit of a, a bummer. Um, what about... I didn't show any of that, did I? <laughs> Forgetting to move the camera again. My apologies. Hang on. I'm just showing you. See, it does fit, but the screw holes just do not line up at all so maybe I can get one of my bay adapters to line up a little bit better um, The only other option I've got, because the screw holes line up the same on that, so the only other option I've got is just to drill these holes, or at least two of them, just drill them a little bit bigger. But I was just thinking, I've got some of them wires out yet. Help me with uh, some cable management at least. I mean, it is actually in there quite tight, to be fair. But yeah, it's just the hole is just a few mil off. But if I just put a slightly larger drill bit in the drill and just drill that through, it'll fit. If I just push it up to one side, it'll lock it into place as well. And I actually think from the design of this and the size of that bay, I will be better off using that. I 
So the question would be, do I put the hard drive on the side here, in this one, or do I leave, put the, um, leave the hard drive where it is and put the SSD in there? I don't know. I've got any more of them. Molex to SATA adapters because I just think they have a longer one. Or a splitter of some. Well, that's got a splitter on it, or two on it. Molex to two. I could just wire on one of these, as I've already cut one. Saves using the connectors, doesn't it? Um, video card power adapter there, that be good. Okay, so I've got... Do I even remember that spur? It's a Molex to a Molex and SAR. I don't really know why you'd want that. That's a single Molex to double, in case you needed extra Molex back in the day. Here's another one, Molex to two SARs. It's a bit too short for this application though. I'm hoping I could find something with a bit more length on it. There's another one that I've obviously cut off an old power supply. We've got Molex, SATA and a floppy disk drive. Could go fancy. <laughs> uh, oh, didn't know I actually had that. That might be useful on a, some bills. I've got single SATA to dual SATA. Glad I'm going through this because I can't remember what adapter cables I've actually got. What is that one? Oh, that's another one. Molex to dual SATA. It's fan connector, fan connector, fan connector. It's another one. Molex to dual SATA. What's that? turn a 4-pin into an 8-pin. Didn't realise I actually had that either. That would have come in handy on a couple of motherboards. Another fan connector. Got some cables here for um, thing the bobbers. I swear I had a longer Molex to SATA adapter, but I can't find it. That's what I was actually uh, hoping for. You think he's in a Molex with the little fan wires on? Quicker. I mean, that one is a longer one. I know it's got that other SAT connector on it, but I don't have to use it, do I? Uh, maybe that one. Let's have those out. Um, fan connectors? If so, are they floppy disk connectors? No, they may be for um, fan controllers. If it is, I've been looking for one of them as well. For a couple of bills. In fact, I'm going to keep that out. I've got to take a look at a friend's computer anyway. It likes to uh, get stuck on the post screen when it boots. Um, but he's got a fan controller in that. When I say a fan controller, the controller bit caught fire on me when I had the case. But the actual distribution board is still in there. That might be what this is actually for. Right. I think I'm going to leave the video here now. 
and all sort of manufacturing date codes and crap. Um, I might actually do a video where I'm just taking the rest of this apart and, you know, getting the other upgrade bits installed. I actually quite like that idea, but I've got to get the bits first, so I need to go and put some stuff. I'm going to have a shop on Amazon. I might put a couple of bits on my wish list there. If I can find them. I'll have a look on eBay as well, just to see what's about and what the best prices are. Yeah, and I might actually see if there is a modern equivalent of a power supply this sort of physical size. I think if it's just that physical size, I could somehow jerry-rig it in there. So I don't really want to go messing around with this lot yet until I know whether I'm going to be using that one or not. Wondering if I could have put something else in there. See if I can't find um, I'll have a look. I'll have to have a look to see what I can find. So that was off camera as well, wasn't it? Right, anyway, thanks a lot for watching everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. If you did like what you've seen and you want to see more, you know, I do computers, model railways, diecast cars, Lego, bicycles, I do lots of stuff. <laughs> so if you like quite a miscellaneous channel, um, then please hit that subscribe button. It helps me out and it will help you uh, keep track on my videos. And it's free, doesn't cost you a penny. Um, and also, if you check the video description down below the video, if you're on um, a mobile device, I think you have to hit show more to see the video description. Um, I'll have links in there to my other two YouTube channels. I've got a gaming channel, so I do a bit of gaming as well. And I've got the Lego channel, which is primarily where I put all the Lego stuff. And there will be links to my Discord server. So if you have Discord, feel free to come join the server. And my Twitch channel. I'm looking for a webcam. Unless I just concede defeat and steal the one back from my workshop. <laughs> anyway, thanks a lot for watching everyone. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.